In this video, we're gonna learn how to control this LED strip using this Shelly RGBW2 relay, as well as Node Red and MQTT. Now, if none of that makes sense to you, then this is the video for you because this is all very new to me. I just learned how this all worked and decided to factory reset everything so I could show you. Yes, that's right, I did factory reset everything and I kind of regret it a little bit because I am having a difficult time. This is about my fifth time recording this video trying to get this Shelly Relay to connect. So let's see if we can get that working. So I am going to go into the Shelly app and add a device. And I've already put in my Wi-Fi account and password. And then I'm gonna choose the Shelly RGBW2 as the module. My phone should want to join the network, so I'm gonna have it join. And we'll just wait and see what happens. This is when it's nice to have a cup of tea. In theory, what's happening right now is my phone is connecting directly to the Shelly and giving it my Wi-Fi's um, name and password so that it can join my Wi-Fi network and be on the same network as all my other stuff. And hopefully that's what's happening. Oh, one of the devices failed to be included. So here's what I'm gonna do just to test out. I'm gonna go to settings and connect directly to it on my phone. And I'm looking at the details and I see that private address is turned off. I thought that that might be the problem before uh, was a security feature of the iPhone was trying to make it um, anonymous and it wasn't happy with that for some reason, but it seems to be working. And if I go into the info, I can see that the IP address that this Shelly Relay gave me was 192.168.33.2. Now, because I'm used to this, I know I can go to 192 dot one six eight dot thirty three dot one and connect to this Shelly relay directly. So now I'm just connected straight to this. I'm not on my own Wi-Fi anymore, but I can now turn it off, turn it on and change the colors. So hopefully that will help my uh, setting this up manually instead. So what I'm going to do, all I care about is I want it to be on my Wi-Fi network. So if I go to internet and security and Wi-Fi mode client, I'm gonna check the box next to connect the Shelly device to an existing Wi-Fi network. I'm gonna choose my Wi-Fi network. I'll hide this. And then we'll save it. And <clears throat> ideally, it's gonna try and connect to my Wi-Fi at home. And if that does work, it should kick me off of its Wi-Fi and put me on my own home Wi-Fi. So if I refresh this page, I should get an error message because I'm now connected back to my regular network, not to its little local network. That looks to be the case. We'll go back to the Shelly app and when I go to the home screen of the Shelly app, it says discovered devices. And there's the Shelly RGBW2. I'm gonna add it and I'll choose my garage because that's the only room that I've set up so far. And save device, <gasps> invalid name. Okay. Um, RGB LED strip one. I don't know if we're allowed to do spaces. We'll find out soon enough. Would you like to connect the Shelly device to the cloud? No. That's kind of the whole point of this whole series is being con in control of my own system. OK, so now <laughs> that looks like it worked. Uh, we just had to kind of manually kickstart it. And now I can turn it off and turn it back on. And if I go into it, I can choose the color and it appears to be working just fine. And I don't know if I can change the brightness or not. So now what we want to do, 
Um, first off, I'm going to go to settings and DC supply voltage. I know I'm using a 12 volt supply, so I'm going to switch it to 12 volt. And uh, power on default mode. Um, I'm going to say by default, leave it off. That way, if I lose power um, and regain power, I don't want the LEDs to come back on. And that's it for the setting up the relay itself. So now we have this working. I can control it with the Shelly app, but we want to control it with Home Assistant using MQTT. So we need to install an MQTT broker. That's kind of like a post office, uh, like a little you know database of commands and statuses. So it's going to see what's the status of this and we're going to point it to that MQTT broker and then it will also subscribe to it and receive commands. So whenever we tell it, hey, we want you to turn off, it will get that command in a split second and turn itself off. And if we tell it that we want to change the color or if we ask it, hey, what's your color? We'll be able to find all that by communicating straight to the MQTT broker. So I'm going to go over here to supervisor in Home Assistant, go to the add on store and I'm going to search for MQTT up here. It's already right here, but I'll just show you if I start searching for MQTT. There's the Mosquito Broker. That's my favorite one to use because it's the only one I've ever tried and it worked. So I'm going to install that and have more tea. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the configuration tab of this. Everything looks good. Um, logins is blank. It looks like a little array right here, but it's blank. And the reason for that is Mosquito with Home Assistant can use user accounts in Home Assistant. So I'm good with this. I'm going to I'm going to point out that it's operating off of port 1883 is one of the ports that it uses. And that will come into play in just a little bit. So I'm going to start the broker. So we just installed and started MQTT. So now we're going to go back into the Shelly app and look at my light, go to the settings. And if we go down to device information, it tells us what the IP address is of this on my home network. So I'll go ahead and pop open a browser and type in that IP address. So now that we're here and we go to the IP address of the Shelly, then I have the same controls as though I have it on my phone. So I can change the colors um, and then turn it off, turn it on, and it seems to be working. So now I'm going to go to Internet and Security and under advanced developer settings, this is a feature that you don't get on the mobile app. So if I'm under internet and security on the mobile app, it goes straight from, um, actually it just has like five options. This one has several more. Um, but now I can enable action execution via MQTT. So I'm gonna put in the username and password that I set up before and the server is actually going to not be whatever this address is. This is going to be my home assistant uh, on port 1883. Remember how 1883 was kind of important to me earlier? It's because this is where it goes. So I'm going to go to 192.168.86.117. And I'm leaving the default of two minute timeout, uh, 60. Oh, no, huh, the minimum reconnect timeout is two. The max reconnect timeout is 60 and the keep alive is 60. No idea what those means, what those mean, but that's what I'm using. And clean session, max QoS. I thought I put it at two before. 
So I kind of feel like I'm going to put it at two because I'm really sure that I had that before set at two. We'll see if it works. So the way that I'm going to test this, I am going to open up a program called MQTT Explorer. This is a Windows program. I'm sure there's uh, several Mac apps that do the same thing. Just search for an MQTT client. And I've already got my Mosquito username and password set up. So I will connect to it. And as of right now, I immediately connected and oh, we just saw Shelly's. And under Shelly's, there's my RGBW2. So one thing that I know is this is an, a red, green, blue, white thing. If I start typing in red, then I see that there's a status topic and it has red of zero, green of zero, and blue of 255, which makes sense because blue's all the way up and everything else is all the way down. So over here on publish, after a lot of trial and error, I figured out instead of status, we're going to change that to set. We're going to make a little JavaScript object. You could just copy and paste everything from above to here, but we really don't need to. If we only want to change red to 255, green to zero, and blue to zero, then it's easier just to type that and nothing else. So if I click publish, then it turns red. So that means we do have the ability to control this over MQTT. We're like 80% of the way there. Now we just need to install a way to automate MQTT commands rather than using this explorer and manually typing in the code to publish to it. So we're going to go back to Home Assistant and go to Supervisor. We're going to go to the add-on store and now we're going to add on something called Node Red. So I just search for Node and we'll install that. While that's installing, we're going to have a little bit of fun. If I pull up the uh, Shelly on my MQTT Explorer, I can see all of these settings, especially like red, green, and blue. Now, if I change it on my phone to be blue, blue just changed in the MQTT Explorer. And if I wanted to, I can click this little chart panel to look at red, green, and blue. And as I change it over time, you can see how it changes the levels of red, green, and blue uh, each time. And so this is kind of a neat program. So if you are looking for one, MQTT Explorer for Windows is pretty nifty. Um, great for troubleshooting. So now I see Node Red is here. And I do want to show it in the sidebar. And if I click Start, it's not going to work. There is a little bit of configuration for me because I'm not yet using um, SSL on my home assistant. I should. It would be really good practice. But I need to change SSL to false and require SSL to false. Now I can save that. And there's a credential secret. So any usernames and passwords that you save in Node Red that it knows is a password, it'll be encrypted. So I'm just going to put some gobbledygook in here and save it again. And now we will start it. Now, because I've had this on my system before, it may have credentials that it remembers from the past. And those credentials will no longer work because I don't remember whatever I typed in to make it encrypted. So we'll open it up. Oh, it says bad gateway. Typically, that's because I'm being impatient. So I'm going to refresh the page. And there's node red. Oh, credentials could not be decrypted. So it did remember a couple of credentials. And those are invalid. So what I want to do is I, I, tip, I really just want to send an MQTT command using node red. So we're going to use what's called a trigger. Um, at least I thought it was a trigger. No, it's an inject. We're going to inject a command. 
Um, and there's probably a smarter way to do this, but that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to do MQTT out. And I'm just going to connect these. So basically, when I click this, it's going to send a command to this MQTT. Um, so first off, we're going to double click on the MQTT thing and we're going to choose. Oh, that's the server that it doesn't know about localhost on port 1883. I'm going to edit this and under security do that. Mosquito and I hope I still have that password saved. Um, the topic that we care about. We're going to go back to MQTT Explorer. And I'm just going to copy this one right here. And oh, wait, can I? No. And we're just going to call this um, Uh, send command. And this is what took me the longest to figure out. Um, send LED strip command. OK. So what I actually want to do is in the timestamp, instead of saying the message dot payload is timestamp, I want it to be a string. And we're going to do one of those little brackety things. And we're going to set um, turn to off and done. So now, in theory, when I click this, it'll um, turn this off. So I'm going to hit deploy and let's see if it works. So I click this and it just turned it off. It worked first try. Um, so we just sent an MQTT command using node red to an LED strip. This is absolutely the bare minimum basics of how this works. But in my next video, I'll dive a little bit deeper into some fun node red uh, scripts or sequences or whatever they're called so that we can automate some stuff in a fun way that might actually be usable in the real world. So I hope this was fun and I hope this was helpful. If there's something you'd like to see me do with the LED strip or you have some ideas for this, please comment below. It really does mean a lot to me and I will read those comments and reply to them as best I can.